Hi, world. I'm not a runner, but I decided that I'm going to start running. Um, my boyfriend's way ahead of me because I can't fucking breathe. But let's see how this goes. I'll update you on how far I get. I just stopped running because my face started swelling up and I'm having an allergic reaction. And I don't know why. And my face is progressively getting more swollen. And hives and my eardrums are burning. And my, like, look at these lines. Like, bro, my whole face. My whole face is swelling up and I don't know why right now. I'm never going on a run again. Like, this can't even be real. Okay, update everyone. My face is very swollen. And I also rolled up my sleeves and I noticed my arms are covered in hives. My hand is swollen. My watch isn't like too tight. I'll take it off, but it's not my watch. It's just me. Um, but yeah, I'm like scared for my well-being right now. I'm waiting for my boyfriend to fucking run back this way on the trail. Like, how far did you get? I'm dying. Hello. Knock on wood. But... Yeah, this is why I don't run, so I won't be running in the future. Yep. But I'm almost back at my car, so that's good. I'm not sure if I should just go relax and chill or if I should, like, go to, like, ER or something or urgent care. But maybe I'll just Google what's wrong with me and play doctor and hope for the best. I don't know. I guess we'll see. Hi, I'm Dr. Rubin. I'm a board-certified allergist, and I feel really badly for this person who had to experience that while they were exercising and not knowing what's going on. So I'm going to take you into a deep dive into the many causes of how you could develop acute hives and potentially swelling. If you want to learn more about allergies, asthma, and immunology, feel free to hit that follow button to learn more information. Keep in mind that I am not her doctor. This video is meant for educational purposes only. It's not meant to diagnose or treat her specific issues. When somebody has hives, they get these itchy patches of skin that look like large mosquito bites where there's redness around it, and then if you push it down, there's lighter areas where fluid is there. And that's the direct result of histamine release from a cell in your immune system called a mast cell, which increases the permeability or makes your blood vessels leaky at the surface of the skin, so fluid rushes out and creates kind of this bubble, and then you get a signal to your brain to itch. Here's what hives looks like on darker skin, and so if you press your finger against that, you would see that there's fluid underneath that area of the rash. The fancy medical term for hives is called urticaria, so if you hear me saying that or hives, they're interchangeable terms. So in the first part of this video, this person was exercising and she was complaining of itching and hives all over her body, but then also swelling in her face. And so what's potentially happening here is that histamine is being released deeper under the skin or in smaller tissues like the lips and eyelids in a process that's called angioedema. There are numerous reasons why somebody could have urticaria and or angioedema. And so the first question is, how long is this lasting for? Is this lasting for less than six weeks or is it greater than six weeks? That delineation tells you if this is an acute or short-term process or if this is chronic or long-term. For this video, I'm going to go over some of the acute causes of urticaria and angioedema. Common causes of acute onset of urticaria include allergic reactions to certain medications, insect stings, food, and latex. In children, it's especially common for infections to cause acute onset of urticaria and angioedema, but this can happen in adults as well. Now, you may not be aware of this, but there are two classes of medications that actually are commonly associated with developing hives, which include narcotics and also non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, such as Motrin, Ibuprofen, and Aleve. Tylenol is not the same thing. There are also a lot of physical triggers of hives and swelling, and I'm going to go over some of those examples right now. Many people who press on their skin can develop hives along the area that they press, and that's called dermographism. That's one of the most common forms of this physical cause of urticaria. Some people develop hives when it's cold outside, so temperatures typically, if it's under 57 degrees Fahrenheit, they can develop hives wherever their skin is in contact with cold temperatures. Some people have something called delayed pressure urticaria, where if they place a bag over their shoulder, several hours later they can develop hives along the area where that pressure was. Some people have something called vibratory urticaria. So, if, for example, if you're mowing the lawn, your arms are constantly shaking from that vibratory force, and you can develop hives along those areas of your body that feel that. 
Some people get hives when they're exposed to UV radiation from the sun, and that's called solar urticaria. Some people get hives when their body's submerged with water, which is known as aquagenic urticaria. Some people develop hives when they have strong emotions or experience stress or they're exercising and their body temperature is elevated and they get very small hives and that's something called cholinergic urticaria. Unfortunately, some people can get hives when they exercise and that's known as exercise-induced urticaria. Now, I'm not saying that this person has this, but I'm just using this as a potential example that when you're exercising, this could either be classified as cholinergic urticaria or that exercise-induced urticaria. And in more severe cases, if you're having additional symptoms outside of the hives, it may be classified as exercise-induced anaphylaxis, which is a potentially life-threatening condition. Signs of anaphylaxis may include problems breathing, choking, wheezing, vomiting, swelling, especially in the throat, tongue area. Um, you could even potentially pass out, and this is potentially life-threatening. Now, treatment of these issues involves mainly trying to avoid those potential triggers and then using medications that help block the effects of histamine, such as second-generation antihistamines like Zyrtec, Claritin, Zizol, and Allegra. Some physicians may opt to use systemic steroids to help treat this as well. In future videos, I will go into more details about some of these conditions and treatments and things like that, so feel free to follow for more information. I hope that this person is doing well. I hear that they're going to go see an allergist, so I hope that this person's able to see this and learn some more information and that they find this helpful. I wish you all the best and have a great day.